Howdy y'all, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today will be part two of my 2021 heavy aero build process. Last week we left off with which hand load did I choose. I went through and saw some of y'all's comments and I don't think anyone really got it right so far. And part of that's uh, because I probably chose a different arrow than what was expected on that, but I'll explain that in a little bit as well. So what I decided to do is I've gone with the Victory V-Force arrow, the 350 spine, and I am going to be going with 275 up front. So that'll be 150 grain insert and then 125 grain field tip or broadhead. Real quickly, we'll go through some of the components for this build, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about each one of them. So like I mentioned, I went with the Victory V-Force Gamer Arrows. So the reason I went with this is I actually kind of liked the Beeman ICS Whiteout paper tears a little bit better. However, when I went to go purchase them, it looked like they were discontinuing those arrows and it was kind of painful to try and find somebody that had enough of them that were bare shaft and would actually cut them for me. So that's why I went with the V-Force arrow. And if you go back and look at the paper tears, they really weren't all that different. And I can make these arrows work just as well as I could have made the Beeman's. Not to mention, I really do like that these are spine aligned and I'm hoping that'll help make this process a little bit quicker and easier as well. For my inserts, I went with the Ethics Archery insert. This is the 125 to 200 grain static insert. So I went ahead and already cut these down to 150 grains and I grinded them and I have the weights I think pretty close to even. If you need to try and get them a little bit better, you can grind one a little bit more to try and get them all pretty close to the same weight. I actually was looking into other insert or outsert systems for this aero build, but I really like Ethics because it seems to be a very well-made product. I haven't had any issues with them at all, and the price point is really not that bad compared to some of the other systems out there. For the fletchings, this year I'm going with the Zinger Fletchings 2.0. These fletchings just came out from Zinger Fletching not too long ago, and I went ahead and decided to test these out. I went with the three fletch, three degree offset, and last year I talked a little bit about clocking your arrow and trying to figure out which way the arrow is coming out of the bow. And honestly, I wasn't going to do that this year because when I killed the last pig with my bow, I actually lost the broadhead because it spun off and the range freeze talked about that a little bit and I don't want to potentially lose an animal because I don't have the broadhead tight enough or it spins off as it's trying to go through the animal. However, when I was talking with Nate with Average Jack Archery about that and he just put out a pretty good video on this as well, he mentioned that he actually hot melts his broadheads and field tips into his inserts and has never had an issue with them twisting or coming out. And so I did test my new strings. I'll show you all a quick video of me doing that. But I ended up going back with the left offset on these as well, just because I think it'll give me a little bit more forgiveness. And as a new archer and bow hunter, I think you can't ask for anything more than that. So I did this in last year's video. And if you haven't watched that, I'll go ahead and do it real quick in this one. But basically what I do is I put a mark on the top of the arrow like that. And I'm about three or four feet away from my block target here. And so I'm going to grab my bow and take a few shots and show you my results. One thing to note is I did pull the fletching off that arrow. You should do this bare shaft. You want your arrow with that line that I showed you facing straight up. And you're just gonna take a couple shots three to four feet away here. So I don't think y'all can see this, but the arrow went in and my line is facing here towards me. So it spun left as it went in. 
And so because it's going to the left, I'll want to use a left helical on this. I'm going to take a couple more just to confirm my results though. So again, turn to the left, I have my line facing out towards me. So I know that my arrow is twisting to the left out of my bow. If your arrow twists to the right, you'll want to put a right helical on that. Again, I don't think this is something that's necessarily that important to your arrow flight. Like Nate said, he doesn't believe it makes him more accurate. He thinks it just makes the arrow a little bit more forgiving. And in my opinion, any more forgiveness that a new archer can get, like myself, you're going to want to take. So for me, again, this year I'm going to go with a left helical. One thing I'm going to try this year is using hot melt for the inserts instead of epoxy. The epoxy actually worked very, very well. I never had any issues losing the inserts or having them pulled out. However, I have shot a couple Robin Hoods or had some arrows that I busted up a little bit. And, you know, I can save those inserts if I use hot melt because I can pull those inserts out. With epoxy, I mean, that thing's not coming loose. And so, I haven't tried hot melt before, so I'm interested to try it this year and see how I like it. And if I like it, I'll probably end up going that route going forward just because it allows me to remove the inserts and reuse the shaft or reuse the insert if I want to do that. And then for the knocks, I've already mentioned this before, but I'm going with the Luminock for all 12 arrows. That way, even my practice arrows, I have the exact same setup as I will for my hunting arrow. And I will be as consistent as possible across all 12 arrows. Talked about this quite a bit last year, but I built a spreadsheet to be able to set up all my arrows and get the weights as close as possible. And so to do that, you're going to need a scale. I bought this scale on Amazon. It wasn't super expensive. It's also not the most accurate scale either but for what I'm doing, it's all I really needed. I've gone ahead and laid out all of my parts here, and I'm gonna try and keep them in this order so that when I weigh them, I can write them down on this sheet of paper. I will then transfer it to my Excel spreadsheet and let that spit out which arrow goes with which fletching, goes with which insert and which knock, and then I can start building my arrows from there. These Victory V-Force arrows actually come with some inserts. I did not have Lancaster Archery install these. They also come with these green, neon green knocks, which if I wasn't using a Luminock, I would definitely use these. They're actually kind of pretty cool color. If you wanted to, you could even get your Zinger fletchings in a neon green and everything would match pretty well. But because I'm using the Luminock and the ethics inserts, I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. Now let's go ahead and get started weighing all of our pieces. I just went through the fletchings and most of them were actually pretty close. They were right around 13, 13.1 grains. Those last two though bumped up to 14.2 and 14.5 and I double checked them a couple times and that's what they are. So I'm a little surprised that they are that far off from the other ones. Not sure what the tolerances are expected on these zinger fletchings, but I may reach out to them and ask them about that because that can really throw off a couple of your total arrow weights when you start trying to get everything to be close to the same. So for the inserts, I'm pretty much within a grain of 150. I have as low as 149.7 up to 150.9. If I really wanted to get very detailed in it, I could grind out that 0.9 and 0.8 or 0.6 and try and get it even closer to 150. But I'm just gonna go through and see how close I can get these arrows anyways before I go mess with that. All the knocks are pretty close to, I think I go from, looks like 25.6 and then as high as only, it looks like 26.2. So really pretty consistent there as well. So now we'll do the arrows. And for my arrows, 
I'm going from about 235.7 at my lowest to about 236.4 or so at my highest. And do some quick math here. And so these are supposed to be, I think, 8.7 per inch. And when I divide that out, it seems like it's a tad less than that. Seems like I'm getting more like 8.6 per inch, but pretty close on that front. So now that I have all my weights, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the Excel spreadsheet and I'll show you all how I do that and how it spits out all this information so that I can start pairing all my components together to make the most consistently weighted arrow. So here you have your shaft weight. You're gonna put all those in there and then you're gonna put your insert weights in there. And you can see that it takes your shaft plus your insert weight and tells you which, which insert to use with which arrow. And then you'll put your knock weight in and your fletching weight in as well. And then you'll click calculate. And once you do that, it'll show you which insert number goes with which arrow number and then that total weight. And then it'll tell you the knock number with that now arrow plus insert based on the arrow number and then your total knock weight. And then same thing for the fletching number. And then the point weight, which we don't have yet, once you add that in, you can recalculate it. And then it'll tell you your total weight for your arrows one through 12. As you can see, we have one or two arrows that are pretty heavily weighted. And that's because we have those two fletchings that are pretty heavy as well. I've printed out all of my weights now. But before I separate them, it'll probably be easier to go ahead and square off the shafts first while they're all here in a group. So to do that, you'll take a Sharpie. And I like to square both sides myself. So what I'll do is I'll just mark a Sharpie all the way around the end here. And it's gonna be hard to see it on the camera. Um, and I'll do that on both sides. But then I have this fast arrow square that I just bought on Amazon and I can put a couple of links in the description below for these items as well. And you just set it right inside and you'll just turn it to square that edge off. You probably don't really need to do both sides, just the side that they cut, but I like doing both just to make sure I'm perfectly square. And what you're looking for is you want the Sharpie to be completely gone all the way around your circle, and that means you're completely square. And so you'll go ahead and do that for all of your arrows. So you can kind of see here all that carbon dust that it creates as you do that. Throw that on. And just proving a point that you actually should clean your arrows once you do this. I'm gonna do that right before I go ahead and insert tune. So I'll show you all that in a second. Now that we have the arrow shaft square, we have the weights of all of our arrows, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the inserts, knocks, and fletchings in groups so that we can separate these out into their specific arrow component. I have arrows one through 12 here, fletchings one through 12, inserts one through 12, and 
Knox 1 through 12. So I'm going to go ahead and go down this list and separate that out. So as you can see, I now have all 12 arrows and all the components separated out. So that being said, I am going to go ahead and clean the arrows and then we will start the building process.